Welcome back to Hardware Unboxed. Today I've got for you a very exciting video that's part one of what will hopefully be a two-part series. It actually comes off the back of our testing of the ASUS Tough Gaming A15. Many of you watched our analysis of that laptop and what we're going through today perhaps wouldn't have been possible without those videos. To cut a long story short, laptop brand XMG saw those videos and reached out to us saying, hey, we also make Ryzen Mobile 4000 based laptops. Do you want to check them out? Oh, and we don't just make AMD laptops, but Intel laptops too, using the same chassis. Do you want to compare them? I said, absolutely, I want to look into that. And so for the past few weeks, I've been benchmarking XMG's AMD and Intel laptops that use the exact same design. The design in question isn't from XMG themselves, but from their ODM Tongfang, who supply designs to many other laptop brands. XMG have branded this laptop as the Core 15, but you may have also seen this design in the Electronics RP15 as one example among others. There are some slight differences between what each brand offers, especially on the software and configuration side, but the baseline hardware is designed and manufactured by Tongfang. XMG sell primarily into the European market, so if you are interested in these laptops, it's worth checking what brand is selling in your region. Anyway, so here we have the XMG Core 15. This one here features the AMD Ryzen 7 4800H, and this one over here features the Intel Core i7-10750H. Other hardware is identical. Both ship with NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2060 GPUs, 16 gigabytes of dual channel DDR4 memory, 512 gig M.2 SSDs, and identical 1080p 144 hz IPS displays. You can configure these systems to your liking, but for this video, we've received the two closest configurations possible. This allows us to do some very interesting benchmarking. For the first time, we can definitively do an apples to apples comparison of an AMD and an Intel system in the same design from an OEM that has spent a significant amount of effort optimizing the experience of both designs. This isn't a quick hack job to swap out the Intel for AMD components. Tongfang and XMG have put in a serious amount of work to ensure that each laptop delivers the highest performance possible with this chassis. In today's video, we'll be covering productivity performance, a bit of a look at thermals, and also battery life. In part two, we'll dive into gaming performance with this design. The big difference between these videos and our previous looks at AMD versus Intel CPUs is that we aren't sticking to stock performance today or comparing with the same power limits. Instead, we are seeing exactly what an AMD versus Intel configuration can do when pushed to the limits with a similar thermal design. Does Intel benefit more from a higher power limit? Can AMD take advantage of higher efficiency? We will explore all of that. Before getting into the benchmarks, I first want to look at the XMG Core 15 designs here, both internally and externally, and comment on some component differences. Because while these laptops are built from the same fundamental platform, as you might expect, there are some considerations made to optimize for AMD and Intel processors. So on the AMD side, as I mentioned, this laptop uses a Ryzen 7 4800H. Crucially, Tongfang have been able to push up the power limit of this APU well above AMD stock values. When using the overboost mode, the CPU runs at up to 72 watts, the first time I've seen a Ryzen laptop exceed the rated TDP range AMD specifies. Intel laptops have been doing this for years, so it's great to see an AMD platform being given the same treatment in terms of power delivery and optimization. And this isn't just a 72 watt boost period, it's a long term limit of 72 watts. The AMD-based Core 15 also features DDR4-3200, meeting AMD's memory spec, and the GeForce RTX 2060 is given a maximum power limit of 110 watts, again in the overboost mode. No crappy display here either. The BOE panel used here has full sRGB coverage and good response times, which make it well suited to both gaming and content creation. On the Intel side, the Core i7-10750H can also be run up to around 75 watts, so slightly higher than the AMD model. While the laptop itself uses the same DDR4-3200 memory modules, we're limited to DDR4-2933 as per Intel's memory spec. The major difference here is the RTX 2060, which is capped to just 100 watts, not 110 watts like the AMD model. Why the difference? XMG say, and I quote, this is due to the higher power efficiency of the AMD CPU. It leaves more headroom for GPU boost. 
There are a couple of notes too that apply specifically to the units I tested. Both came configured with 46 watt hour batteries. When XMG ships these systems, they will be configured with 62 watt hour cells instead. Also, my Intel unit had a Panda 120Hz panel instead of the BOE panel. Uh, XMG actually ships with this device by default. So while the two displays may look a little different on camera, XMG says that both the AMD and Intel models actually ship with the same display, the BOE panel on the AMD model. You might also be wondering, why aren't we comparing an AMD 8-core CPU to an Intel 8-core CPU? Using a Core i7-10750H is a bit of an imbalance in configurations when the Core i7-10875H exists. Well, firstly, the Core 15 is not available in a 10875H model. And secondly, despite the AMD design featuring 8 CPU cores, it's actually the cheaper model at around 1450 euros, including tax, versus 1540 euros for the Intel model, same configuration otherwise. The external design of both XMG Core 15 laptops is identical, excluding the stickers that identified the internal hardware. So we're getting a pretty nice metal chassis for the upper base and display area. It's reasonably slim and light, although not a standout in either area. And it has a keyboard and trackpad combination that is great to use. Nothing overly fancy here, it's a good design. Most importantly, the vent system is the same with both the Intel and AMD models. There's no situation here where the AMD model has blocked vents while the Intel model has open vents. And there are a lot of vents here. Tongfang have actually thought very carefully about how to get adequate airflow into the cooler so there are huge vents directly over the fan intakes open exhaust ports on three sides, and even some ventilation over the heat pipes, which you can see from the underside of the chassis. The internal layout of each model is largely the same in terms of peripheral locations. All the IO, SSD, battery, Wi-Fi card, and fans are in the same location. But there are some noticeable differences for the main components. On the Intel model, the GPU is on the left, with the CPU and RAM positioned on the right. You'll spot the H-series PCH in the bottom left as well, a component that isn't seen for the AMD system, as all I.O. functions are integrated into the Ryzen APU. The AMD model has the APU and RAM on the left, with the GPU on the right, so a swap compared to the Intel model. This leads to some heat pipe layout differences, although the fans and heatsinks are the same. The AMD model has two shared heat pipes for the APU, two shared heat pipes for the GPU, and two dedicated GPU heat pipes. The Intel model has three shared heat pipes for the CPU, three shared heat pipes for the GPU, and one dedicated GPU heat pipe. Both models have a heat pipe that connects the left and right coolers. From this layout, to me it doesn't look like one design is better than the other, it's just a product of the layout and positioning. For example, this left cooler only has two heat pipe inputs, while the larger right cooler can accept three heat pipes. On the AMD design, the priority has gone to the GPU with its two dedicated heat pipes running to that larger cooler. On the Intel design, the CPU has priority with three shared heat pipes, a different approach that likely takes into consideration the strengths of each platform. There's some other stuff worth pointing out here as well. Both designs have direct cooling for both GPU and CPU VRMs, unlike the ASUS TUF design, as cooling these components is very important. Tongfang even thought of SSD cooling here. The M.2 slots have a metal heat spreader that dissipates heat into the chassis. On first glance, this looks like a really solid design overall. Now let's get into some actual benchmark numbers. Not going to go through every benchmark that we normally cover, but most of the key comparisons, starting with Cinebench R20. Here there is a clear advantage for the Ryzen configuration in the multi-thread test. With 72 watts of power available, the XMG Core 15 is the fastest Ryzen 7 4800H laptop that we've tested, and it pulls 60% ahead of the Intel configuration with its 75 watt Core i7-10750H. In fact, the 4800H is within striking distance of a desktop Ryzen 7 3700X in this test. We're getting 95% of the performance of that chip. However, the Intel configuration is faster in the single core workload, 4% faster to be precise. This carries across to some single thread workloads like Adobe Acrobat PDF exporting, which we won't show in detail today, but the Intel model is 12% faster in that workload, the highest difference we saw in a single thread test. The AMD model also holds a dominant performance lead in handbrake or other CPU-only video rendering workloads. The power boosted 4800H is 49% faster in this test than the power boosted 10750H, showing that within the same chassis, there is a significant advantage to having Ryzen in here compared to Intel. You'll see similar results in Blender, where the AMD system just dominates multi-core performance. 
in shorter, more boost-heavy workloads, it's still advantageous to have the Ryzen configuration, although not to the same extent. In Excel, the 4800H model is 8% faster, and in MATLAB, it's 7% faster. In 7-zip, the difference depends on whether you're doing compression or decompression. The 4800H model is 54% faster for decompression, but just 11% faster for compression. You'll also want the Ryzen model for co-compilation. In our CYGWIN compile, the AMD system pulled ahead by a significant 42%. Meanwhile, for Chromium compilation, AMD also has an advantage here of about 17%. This isn't a situation where Intel can simply raise the power limit to match AMD, as Tongfang have also boosted the AMD part when designing these machines. What I was most interested in is to explore performance when the workload has a mixture of CPU and GPU utilization. Both laptops have the same GPU. The AMD model has a slightly higher power limit on the GPU, and both machines overall have a similar thermal solution. So which is the better choice in workloads like Photoshop, Premiere, and DaVinci Resolve? Well, for Photoshop, we do get a clear win here for the Intel machine, one of the rare wins. Although as Photoshop is lightly threaded, it makes sense that the system with higher single thread performance would come out on top. The AMD system is just 3% slower, so for someone buying a system for a mixture of productivity, this margin may not be significant enough to warrant going exclusively with the Intel model. But for pure Photoshop users, the Intel system is faster in the Puget benchmark. For Adobe Premiere work, the AMD model is clearly the superior option. For live playback of clips in the timeline, the AMD configuration is 14% faster in the Puget workload. It's also around 14% faster for exporting videos in the Puget benchmark. Not the same huge margin we saw for CPU-only encoding, but faster is still faster. I suspect the Intel system has gained ground here, as although most of the encoding work can now be done on the NVIDIA GPU, Premiere still seems to better utilize the Intel iGPU for periphery tasks like video decoding. For two-pass encodes, which are CPU-only, the AMD system held a 30% advantage, so if you want to up the quality of your exports, the margin will only grow in favor of AMD. The AMD model was also faster when warp stabilizing, about 12% faster for a single instance. Due to its higher core count design, I suspect this would also favor AMD if you were running multiple instances simultaneously. And finally, we have the DaVinci Resolve benchmark, where once again the AMD system is the better choice. We're not seeing a massive margin in this workload, but the AMD model is 11% faster overall, owing to a more efficient CPU design and slightly higher power allocation to the GPU. On average, looking across our entire suite of productivity workloads, the AMD model comes out 19% faster. However, the actual performance difference you see can be drastically different depending on the workload. In pure CPU-only multi-threaded tests, the AMD model is up to 60% faster. In key CPU plus GPU workloads, you can still expect a 10 to 20% advantage to the AMD configuration, and then Intel holds the single-thread performance crown. In terms of thermals and noise output, there isn't much separating the two models in a CPU-only workload like Handbrake. Noise output was within the margin of error, which is no surprise given both have the same fans and heatsink combination, with both systems running in the same overboost mode, presumably with the same fan controls. The AMD system did run slightly hotter on its reported sensor at 90 degrees Celsius versus 85 degrees Celsius for the Intel model. However, there are question marks over how comparable these numbers are given they are from different types of sensor. As fan noise is the same and neither system throttles and package power was also within 3 watts for both models, there is no real-world thermal system advantage for either model. But that's to be expected given Tongfang has tuned each configuration to use as much power as is possible with this thermal design. We'll look at combined CPU plus GPU thermals in our gaming investigation, which will hopefully be published next week. And finally, I've got a brief look at battery life, which for this sort of gaming focus system is never going to be amazing. First up is streaming a 4K HDR H.265 video over Wi-Fi using VLC, with both models configured at the same brightness level. In this video streaming test, the AMD model was a bit more efficient and able to last longer, about 25% longer with the same battery capacity. What was most interesting is to compare battery life and performance when running our handbrake workload on battery. Performance drops off a fair way here, with the CPU maxing out at 30 watts on the Intel system and just 25 watts on the AMD system, less than half the power the laptop will consume when plugged in. 
However, the Intel system is actually unable to complete the workload on battery, dying just after one hour of use with only 76% of the video encoded. The AMD system in comparison takes just 43 minutes to encode the video and finishes with 38% of its battery remaining. When you extrapolate this result, the AMD system would only last about 10% longer under a sustained high performance workload, but because it's so much faster at a given power level, it can just do more in that time. To me, this is a great example of how a more efficient CPU design can benefit laptop buyers. Slamming the CPU under full load, yeah, there's not much separating Intel or AMD. But what the Ryzen APU allows you to do is do more with the time you have. In some instances, this ability to return to idle sooner will extend battery life. In others, it means you can fit in more tasks into the battery capacity of your device. At the end of the day, we already knew from our previous benchmarking of AMD's Ryzen 7 4800H that it's faster than a Core i7-10750H under stock conditions. But what we saw in this video is exactly how that difference translates to real-world devices for productivity workloads with an otherwise identical configuration. As expected, when an OEM knows what they're doing, they can take that inherent advantage the Ryzen APU has and turn it into a real advantage for laptop buyers. The key factor here is that XMG don't have an unbalanced lineup where the Core 15 Intel model receives a power boost while the Core 15 AMD model is stuck at stock power. XMG and their ODM Tongfang have put a lot of time into optimizing both systems, and when each configuration is allowed to harness the full capabilities of the thermal design, the AMD Ryzen 7 4800H model pulls ahead for productivity performance in most instances, sometimes by huge margins. And this shouldn't be too much of a surprise. Built on 7 nanometer, AMD Zen 2 design is more efficient, both at stock 45 watt power levels, but also when boosted up near 75 watts. We've only seen Intel be able to match AMD this generation with an unbalanced power configuration. Usually the Intel CPU needs to suck down twice the power. In laptops with limited cooling capacity, it's just not possible to give the Intel CPU the power to normalize performance without making the system larger. But there are other benefits too longer battery life, or the ability to do more within a certain battery capacity, there also isn't much difference thermally at maximum performance as you'd expect, so the AMD system has much greater scope to deliver acceptable performance at lower noise levels. For example, with this AMD model running with the silent fan profile and eco mode enabled, it almost matches the full power Intel system in Cinebench R20 performance, all with virtually no fan noise compared to the about 50 decibels that you're getting from this machine. So if you were choosing a model to purchase, there is no doubting that the Core 15 with Ryzen 4000 inside is the better model for most productivity workloads. Not all. If you have something heavily single threaded that you need maximum performance from, the Intel model is still the way to go. But for basically everything else, going with the AMD model is a far better option. The fact that it's cheaper seals the deal, although that may change if AMD's Ryzen 4000 supply issues continue. And unlike some other OEM designs out there, I'd have no trouble recommending the XMG Core 15 or this chassis from another brand. This is a really great laptop, excellent cooling solution, decent display, nice selection of ports, and a well-constructed design that ultimately, at least for the Ryzen 4000 model, delivers much higher performance than other AMD laptops that I've tested. This is the first XMG laptop I've ever tested, and I was genuinely impressed with the quality and optimization available here. We will be back next week to do a deep dive on gaming performance, but until then, that's it for this one. If you do like our laptop coverage, consider subscribing to get more of this stuff in your inbox. We also have our Patreon page available, links in the description below, where you can support the channel, get access to our Discord chat, monthly live streams, behind the scenes videos, all that sort of thing. Thanks everyone, 20% Club for watching all the way to the end, and I'll catch you in the next one.